hi hello i have decided to do something that is kind of huge and is honestly the biggest project that i've ever you know just created for myself and decided to undertake and i am really excited about it i'm really nervous to do it and to figure this out okay so this is what i'm doing starting august 1st 2023 which is just a few days ago i decided that in one year i want to make a thousand mugs i want to create a thousand ceramic pieces it just sounds better to say making a thousand mugs in a year so i'm going to call it that but in reality there is going to be vases there's going to be cups there's going to be whatever other things that i decide that i want to make but in one year's time i am going to create at least 1000 ceramic pieces now what i've been creating so far i started learning how to do ceramics a few months ago at the start of this year and so far i'm probably making maybe like 10 pieces a month so i have to take exactly what i'm doing right now and 10 times that and do it consistently for a year and then i'll be able to meet my goal which is insane absolutely insane but this is the thing that i really like about this i really think the idea of doubling down is really really powerful so when you find something that you want to do or that you enjoy and you want to pursue it going deeper into that and deciding i'm not just going to go at this same pace i'm actually going to go fucking harder than seems possible than seems reasonable to do because i find myself doing this so much as a creative and then just as a human of toning myself down of making myself do less than necessarily what i want to do and and playing safe and doing things like this is the normal way this is the normal amount of pieces to create this is the normal amount of time to spend in the studio this is the normal way to run a business to create things to show up in the world and when we follow those ideas that we have around what the normal way to approach something is is we actually limit ourselves in the way that we the extent that we could create and the extent that we could express ourselves and it's very easy to very quickly start feeling stagnant in something when we're actually toning ourselves down and we might not even be aware of it and instead if we was to ask ourselves like the very very sexy question of what if instead of toning myself down i let myself go 10 times harder go 10 times more towards this crazy dream and this crazy thing that i'm obsessed with and want to pursue so that's really why i've decided that i want to make 1000 ceramic pieces in a year even though it feels entirely impossible even though i have no idea if i'm ever going to be able to come close to achieving that simply setting that goal has already forced me to start making like different plans and it's going to require me to go to the studio a lot more regularly to think about my practice as a creative and as a ceramic artist i guess differently i'm going to have to show up in a dramatically different way if i expect myself to even come anywhere close to achieving this impossible goal and it's the simple fact of setting that impossible goal that puts you in this position to start thinking differently and to have to think outside the box and to not limit yourself because suddenly you have this thing that you're reaching towards and that's going to propel you to have to behave differently because there's no way to stay comfortable and get yourself as close as possible or hopefully surpass the goal that you've set for yourself. So if you have something that you're thinking, I wanna learn this thing, I wanna develop this skill, I wanna explore this world that I'm really interested in. I really encourage you to be like, what is a reasonable goal that I could set myself in that place? And how would it feel if I timed that goal quite literally by 10, or if I blew that goal up and allowed myself to actually pursue it, allowed myself to really dive deep into the things that interests me, the things that turn me on, and let them consume me. Let me be ha as involved in that thing as I wanna be. So that's what's really exciting me right now. Okay, so I've wrote down a couple things of my reasons why I wanna do this, and I wanna share them with you because it might help put it into perspective what this this goal is what this plan of action i have for myself and also it might bring up some ideas in you as to 
what you might want to pursue and give you some ideas of why you might want to pursue that. Because it can be really helpful to have a grasp on why we want to do something, especially when it feels really impossible and we have no idea how we're going to make it happen necessarily. But understanding why we want to make it happen will be the thing that propels us to just start, go through the process, start making as many things as we can, start diving in deeper, and the how, hopefully, fingers crossed, will reveal itself through that process. So the first why that I wrote down is repetition is the way to improve at something. I have really, really enjoyed learning ceramics and the more things that I make, the better I get it, the easier it becomes, the faster I'm able to create something. And that's really the biggest motivation for me for taking a challenge that feels fucking huge is because I know how much I will improve through the process. There is no way I could make 1000 pieces and not improve and i like this kind of game it's quantity it is quite literally a numbers game and i think something that can be really restrictive for creatives is when we block ourselves by trying to focus on the quality of our output when in reality quality comes as a byproduct of quantity if you make a lot of things you will make better things you will be able to develop your style through making a lot of things you'll be able to develop your technique through making a lot of things and i think if we get if we hold ourselves back by thinking we have to do something to an excellent ability we will create barely anything whereas if we go through the process of just creating a shit ton of things it is going to happen by default that a percentage of that stuff will be great. An uh, increasing percentage of that stuff will be really, really good. The more we do something, the better we get it, the easier it becomes to do that thing. The next reason that I know it as my why is because challenges are motivational as fuck for me. I love having a challenge. I love setting a goal for myself. I love having something to tick off. I love feeling myself get closer and closer to completing something. And if I know that I'm going to get those dopamine hits from being able to tick off another 10 mugs, another 10 vases, whatever it is, it is going to motivate me along the journey of creating something. And it gives some context to what I'm creating rather than just making stuff. Even though it, this is literally an arbitrary number that I've just plucked out of the air, having that thing that I know that I'm personally working towards and I can understand the reasons why I do it is very motivating and I think that is very helpful for creatives if you have a skill that you want to get really really good at especially if you want to get it in a short period of time having a very like clearly defined challenge goal target that you're aiming for is going to help you stay on track help you keep taking action on that goal the next thing is that having a goal setting a target like this gives you the two things that i think creatives need this is what we need to be really productive successful creatives freedom and structure they work hand in hand we can think that all we want as creatives is all of the freedom in the world to create anything and everything that we want at any time we want to do it and we just give ourselves ultimate freedom to tap in and tap out. That is not actually the most effective way to create things. I know from my own experience that if I tell myself to just make something, anything, whenever I want, I'm probably not going to make as much stuff. I'm probably not going to have as much fun making it because I'm wasting a lot of my time and energy and creative abilities just starting from scratch and trying to figure out what it is that I even want to do. Whereas if I give myself a little bit of structure and give myself some guidelines to work within, then I have a place to play in. I have this parameter that I can express myself and put my expression, put my ideas into. So if the overarching goal is to make a thousand mugs, I already know the basis of the thing that I'm going to be making and I can be really experimental within that framework of you're going to be making a ceramic piece. Then I know what tools I'm need, going to need. I know where I'm going to start. I know what steps I have to take to create that thing and I also know the limitations of my medium, the limitations of my resources, the limitations of my time and my abilities, all of these things and it gives you the place to actually begin and I think when we give ourselves unlimited freedom to create anything at any time, 
we struggle to start. We struggle to actually begin and to be able to begin over and over and over again. Whereas those boundaries, those parameters, we have our starting off point. It's easier and easier to pick up where we left off, to start on the next piece and the next piece and the next piece, because we know what the fuck we're doing. We know what the goal is here. The next reason that I wrote as my why to make a thousand mugs in a year is it's big and it's dramatic and that's very fun and very attractive to me. I like doing things that are ridiculous. I like the fact that I actually really want to document this process and share this process, which is actually the next point. But I love the fact that, you know, the idea of me in a year's time having made a thousand pieces in a year is just very sexy to me. It's very fun. I can think of how much fun I'll have in the process of creating it. And that is such a huge drive and motivation for me to set these silly goals and to play around with the fact that I get to channel my creative expression in these fun ways just because I created the idea and I said to myself, you know what would be fun if you set the insane goal of making a thousand pieces in a year. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see what happens along that journey. Let's do something that that's really big. The idea of seeing even like a thousand pieces. I'm probably, I'm obviously not going to have all thousand pieces together. I'm going to be selling and sharing these things throughout the process, but being able to compile a collage with all of the pictures of these many, many pieces to be able to see my body of work together at the end of the year. That is so exciting to me. And as I just hinted on the final why of why I want to do this is to create and document an example of building a successful creative business. A lot of what I do online in my work is absolutely create things myself, but also share that process of creating things and inspire hopefully other people to create their own things and set their own goals and pursue creative business if that's what you want to do and i think it's really really i love talking about it i love talking about business and creativity and i think the best way to teach people or to inspire people to do something is for me to do it myself and for me to do it 10 times the amount that I am expecting other people to do it. I don't expect other people to go and make a thousand pieces in a year. I don't expect other people to start a new aspect or an entirely new business within a year and have that be a thriving thing within such a short period of time. But the thing that I want to do this for is to be an example of how big and how bold and how hard you can go for your goals to show you that it is actually way way more achievable than you might think and to be able to be an expander and to be someone who shows you what can be possible when you let yourself have fun and set ridiculous goals and play around with your creative expression and being able to create that through this new medium, this new thing that I've been exploring and really interested in myself and seeing, can I add this as an aspect to my business? Can I create something that could be its own business on the side, but obviously it's just going to be an aspect to what I'm creating and what I love to do. I think that's really exciting. I think that's a really powerful use of my time and my energy to create something that obviously is going to benefit me in terms of my skills and my income, but also it's going to be a really good example to other people to show you that it's not just a ridiculous dream to build a creative business and it's actually way, way more attainable than a lot of people think, but there's just not been that many examples of it for most of us of people doing it. And the idea here is that I want to document the process of me building a ceramic business or a ceramic wing to my business so you can see how this thing works. I can show you some of the behind the scenes of how I'm doing it and how the struggles and the triumphs and all of the details that goes into making art and selling it on the internet and hopefully that will light a bit of a fire under your ass to start taking action and start making things, start sharing your work if that's something you've been thinking about, if that's something that you've been dreaming about. Okay, I'm on the way to the studio right now. I have some pieces today that um, 
I threw the other day and now I need to trim them and I think I also have some pieces ready to glaze and send in for their final firing. I'm pretty sure that's what I have to do. We'll see when I get to the studio and I look at my pieces, remember what I'm actually doing. But I wanted to share with you really quick as well. There are two things that are going to be required of me to be able to achieve this goal of making 1000 pieces within a year. And this is where it gets really expansive. And I think it's really important for us to notice the things that will be required to change or our commitment and what it can look like to help us actually what's going on here the commitment from us that is going to be required for us to achieve the goal because it's one thing to set a goal and to be excited about it and to think of the whys and to think of even the things that we want from that which i also have a, a couple of things down here that i want to share with you but what is required of us like what do we need to do what do i need to do to make this happen being very realistic about this and also making it as simple as possible so i've basically broken it down into two things that will be required what i think i'm sure other things are going to come up along the journey but right now these are the two things that are really clear to me that if i figure out these things if i achieve these things if i show up for these things consistently then i will be able to achieve this i'll be able to do this it'll make it an attainable goal it'll take it from being a completely ridiculous goal and it will make it be something that oh i just need to follow these guidelines that i've set for myself and then i can do it i can make it happen so the first thing is that I will need to have a minimum of three days in the studio per week. That's not going to be like a full, full day. I don't know if you've done ceramics before, but it actually can be quite physically exhausting, especially when you're throwing things on the wheel. You're literally like using your body weight to push and to hold clay and to form it into shape. It can be quite tiring. So usually when I'm at the studio, I'm probably like four to five hours max, but if i so to make all of these pieces well absolutely there's no way i'll be able to do that with less than three days in the studio a week and that's something that is achievable to me i know there's going to be some times where i spend way more time in the studio but if i can keep consistent with a minimum of three days in the studio per week then i'll be able to make that consistent progress but i also have the understanding that to 10x my goal of like what i'm currently creating and times that by, by 10 it's going to require different things. It's going to require more things. It's going to require me to step some shit up. And that goes beyond, um, you know, what, like 15 hours in the studio. This is a, a big thing, right? It's going to require a lot more time from me, a lot more energy from me than that. And so for that, I will need to have my own wheel and studio set up at home, I think, to be able to pull this off within a year. And what I really want to do in this project as well is resist the edge to just invest a ton of money into buy my wheel now and to set up my studio at home now because that takes so much realism out of it for other people who might not have, you know, a spare couple grand laying around to invest in these tools for your creativity and i think if i did that it would kind of undermine the whole one of the big points of this challenge for me which is to give you guys an example of how you can create and scale a creative business so what i want to do is to actually fund my investments in this ceramic business from the ceramics that i'm making so when I release the first drops and the continual drops of ceramic pieces, I'm literally going to be using the proceeds, the profits from those to buy more equipment, to buy bags and bags of clay, to buy a wheel, to set up my home studio and to show that process. And that way you'll be able to see how you can take the things that you're creating and have that become an income stream that fuels your ability to create more and more things without needing to just have this big cash injection because i don't want you to think that you have to wait and pause your 
desire to create things and your desire to build a creative business until you have like 10 15k to invest in the equipment that you need i want to really show you an example of how you can grow and scale things as you go that is really really exciting for me because that's how i initially built my business i started by you know making a few pieces here and there and reinvesting the funds into more supplies into more printings of my affirmation decks and then that way I was able to sell more and I was able to increase my profit margins and I want to really allow myself to document the process of this but so it becomes like you can see the full journey of that you can see how the pieces fit together so let's go to the studio yeah. okay so I just got to the ceramic studio but I very quickly just want to tell you the free packs the free outcomes that I want to get from taking on this challenge of making a thousand mugs in a year and the first one is that you know i mentioned this a little bit earlier of dramatic skill improvement there is no way i can make a thousand pieces and not see a huge improvement in my throwing skills in my ceramic abilities just trial and error over and over and over and over again and there's no way that i won't improve so this is really a big part of why I wanted to do this is to think of how I can have my own ceramics crash course and a way to commit to that is setting a ridiculous quantity based goal. Um, the second perk, the second thing that I'm going to achieve from following this is that if I make a thousand pieces and I sell those thousand pieces and I share the journey of building this creative business then I'll be able to add an extra hundred thousand dollars plus to my business which is a great additional income source right and I think be able, being able to show an example of how to do that and how to make what could be a, a standalone job and add that aspect to my business and show you guys an example of how you can build um, a profitable successful business from the things that you create is really sexy and then the third and the final thing is related to this this situation right here and that is developing my youtube and maybe hopefully i'm thinking about doing tiktok content and having this thing that i want to specifically focus on sharing this journey rather than just every single thing that i do could be content and every single thing that i do could be shared online but instead being like i really want to prioritize sharing this journey of my ceramics improvement my making a thousand pieces and bringing you guys along on the journey of that it's forcing me to make more content and it's also going to help me develop the skills of filming and shooting videos and making things like that which i find really exciting and i've wanted to do for a while and sometimes you just need a specific goal that's going to motivate you to do it let's go in studio yesterday I actually picked up a bunch of pieces that I've just had their final firing and I want to show you them because they are very cute look at this little hello absolutely vibed nothing but vibe I'm obsessed obsessed with this gonna make a thousand million of these literally the coolest can we I have a few more of these coming out. This is my little ashtray that I've been working on the shape of, and we've got some gloopy glaze on there. I think, dude, I'm obsessed with this shape. I was throwing them, wait, no, it's upstairs. I was throwing them more um, like Seth Rogen style with the little lip thing, but I really, I mean, I just want to develop my own style, my own way of doing things anyway, and, I think I think maybe this is it or at least it's getting closer to what it's gonna be you know look at the gloops look at the gloops on that hot and then this one in like the darker blue more royal blue 
with like black clay name on the bottom. All in the details, babe. All in the details. These angles, hot, so hot. These ones I threw with speckle clay, which I do like, but I don't like as much as just the white. Um, but I really want these are going to be basically like paintbrush holders and water for painting with and making things with. I think that is just so fucking cute. I'm pretty sure this one is going to end up being the like signature. This is how I see it, right? This is, I see this being like the signature Gabriella Rosie. You have to have the to-do list of make, wait, no. The signature Gabriella Rosie to-do list make art and be hot mug. Every creatrix has to have one of these. And then the final one, the final prototype is this little guy. Um, I am obsessed, obsessed with how this one turned out. Every day, in every way, I'm aligning with my cosmic brilliance. Dude, drinking your coffee. Picture yourself drinking your coffee from this in the morning. Starting your day with absolutely nothing but vibes. Nothing but vibes. And then I have the pieces that we made um, at the Creatrix Retreat. We did a little mug decorating situation. And obviously I went full ham with every single <laughs> type of way that I can think of, of writing Creatrix um, and love it, obsessed with it. Might make some to sell. So let me know if you like this and you, you want one of these. The ones that the babes made. Look at this, look at this. Stunning, we love it. All of the elements coming together. This gorgeous guy, like, it's so beautiful. I love these pencils. So these are basically like, um, please focus. Like don't, don't play with me like this. Don't play with me like this. These are um, underglazed pencils. So you can draw on them because regular graphite pencils will literally evaporate when you put them into the kiln. But this is a underglazed pencil. So you get this like gorgeous sketchbook kind of feel to it. This looks amazing. I'm so excited to send it out to Kitty and for you to be drinking your coffee from it in the morning. And that's it, that's what we've got. I am gonna go take these puppies for a walk so they calm down. They're being crazy. And then I'm gonna head to the studio. <laughs> 